everybody, is rioting still the voice of the unheard? We'll talk about it in just a moment. Today all of our cities confront huge problems. All of our cities are potentially powder kegs as a result of the continued existence of these conditions. Many in moments of anger, many in moments of deep bitterness, engage in riots. And let me say, as I've always said, and I will always continue to say, that riots are socially destructive and self-defeating. I'm still convinced that non-violence is the most potent weapon available to oppress people in their struggle for freedom and justice. I feel that violence will only create more social problems than they will solve, that in a real sense it is impractical for the Negro to even think of mounting a violent revolution in the United States. So I will continue to condemn riots and continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. I continue to affirm that there is another way. But at the same time, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must ga engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. I think America must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. But in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. You might not even know that that's who originally said that because over the past year, we've heard that said over and over through media, journalists, and even politicians, using that as an excuse or a way to condone all the violence and the rioting that's taken place during this past year. We haven't heard that so much from this past week. In fact, I think from both sides of the aisle, we've heard people condemning, outright condemning what has taken place at our Capitol building with the really the rioting and the destruction of the building, the violence and the loss of life. There's been condemnation from at least everyone I've heard of uh, as, they've, as they've spoken about the situation. What I want to talk to you about is what the Bible says about rioting today. Uh, you know, during this past year, there have been numerous riots that have taken place. In fact, uh, it's, there's been over like $2 billion worth of property destruction. There's been lives that have been lost. There's been so much mistrust in, in our local governments. We've had people resigning, law enforcement resigning, quitting because they don't feel like they're supported. They're, they're placed in situations where they're told to back off. They're told to press in and there's just not strong leadership that's been taking place. Uh, you have politicians who have been condoning the violence, who have come out and said they're not going to back off and they shouldn't back off. You have other politicians who are establishing bail funds to get those protesters and those rioters out of jail. And so they've been actually promoting the rioting over the past year. Now, many of those and probably, in fact, all of those same ones have condemned these recent um, events that took place at our Capitol, and they should condemn them, and everybody should, because it's an ugly time in the United States, and there's some things happening that should never happen, never happen. Uh, never should our uh, political process be interrupted as people break down the doors, break through windows, and threaten our political leaders. Uh, it wasn't okay this week. It ha wasn't okay two years ago when we had Supreme Court uh, hearings and during the Women's March, the Capitol building, they went and shut down the Capitol building and pounded on the Supreme Court doors as well. 
It wasn't okay over the past uh, year when federal buildings were attacked, police stations were attacked. It's not okay when uh, private enterprise, uh, private uh, companies, whether they're whether they're local businesses or just privately owned corporations, it's not okay for them to be attacked either. All of this should be condemned. Rioting is ultimately uh, leads to violence and destruction of property, and it's lawlessness. And so, what does the Bible say about that? Well, clearly, lawlessness is never a good thing. God is just; He's the just judge, and though He is forgiving, He's still just, and it's important to understand that. And he's established uh, a certain order for our (laughs) well-being. The Bible does talk about some riots, though, uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians 6, 5, Acts 17, 5, and Acts chapter 19. It refers to riots that the apostle Paul was engaged in. And every time those riots took place, they were always motivated by, by jealousy and deception right at the very heart. And there were some really hate-filled uh, people, instigators that fired up the townspeople. Many of those people who got caught up in the riots didn't even know what they were rioting about. They were there and they just heard something that kind of they agreed with. And next thing you know, the tensions escalate, escalate. There's so much fuel. And then someone really lights that match and it's a full-blown riot. And people are, are getting beat up and, and properties damaged and, and lives are being lost. And Acts 19.32 it says this, that, that many of the uh, Ephesian rioters, they did not even know why they were there. That really describes the mob mentality that surrounds rioting. I think it's important for us to ask uh, uh, what the Bible says about this, because as Christians, sometimes if the riot lines up with our political or cultural agenda or beliefs, then we think it's okay. But it's not. It's not. In fact, if you listen to that quote from Martin Luther King Jr., uh, in context, he is not justifying riots in any case, any way at all, any shape, any form. He condemns them, and he says that specifically, I will always be against the violence. I will always be against the riots. So he is clearly saying that riots undermine the cause, they actually move the agenda backwards instead of forward, and, and they really are ineffective to producing the results that they're after. However, he said he's also against the situation, the environment um, that the people who are rioting, they find themselves in. In other words, the injustice, the oppression, he's, he's against that as well. And so you can be against rioting and you can be against injustice or inequality at the same time. You can be against those things. One of the most famous riots in the Bible, it took place when Jesus was on trial. So he went to Pilate. Pilate uh, basically said he found no fault in Jesus. In Luke chapter 23, 4, he said, I find no fault in him. I've examined him and you've made these accusations and your accusations are unsubstantiated. And so I find no fault in him. And so what happens is you have a large crowd of people and you have the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, and their intent, their agenda was that Jesus would be killed. And so because it didn't happen in the courts and they couldn't get it done there, they instigated the people to rally against Jesus. And it went from a week before that or a few days before that where they were shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from Mark chapter 11 or 9 and 10. Now, these, uh, this big crowd of people were, were whipped up against Jesus in this frenzy to where they're shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. How many people in that crowd do you think were among those who had heard his teachings in the past and liked them? They, maybe there were some people in that crowd who saw his miracles. Maybe there were even people in that crowd who experienced a miracle themselves. And yet, in the heat of the moment, they got caught up in this protest, in this rally, and ended up in a riot and doing some things and yelling some things and acting a way that they would have never imagined. we got to be careful about those things, that we don't let our emotions lead us 
Emotions are great servants, they're terrible masters. Anger can be a great servant, but a terrible master. We've heard over this past year many people saying, I'm angry, you should be angry. How can you not be angry? Well, you can be angry and not sin. You can be angry and it can lead to righteousness, right? And so, uh, again, emotions can be great servants, but they're terrible masters. And once you lose control of your emotions and they have control of you, somebody uh, who stands to benefit from using your emotions will whip you up into a frenzy when you're in a crowd and cause you to do some things that you would probably never, ever do. And that's kind of what happens during riots. It happened in the, uh, in the scripture there. You have, saw it happen in Jesus' experience. You see it happen um, in Paul's experience in Ephesians. We'll talk about that here. In Ephesians chapter 19, when he was, when he was um, part of a, a riot, it's important to know this, that he did not cause a riot. In fact, he says, I didn't cause a riot. Others Others who didn't like the teaching, they rioted against that. And so, again, there's not justification for the um, believer to be engaged in a riot, support a riot, um, to promote a riot, to instigate a riot at all. Um, How riots end up happening, again, there's a lot of fuel on the fire. They might look spontaneous and maybe they happen, but there are people that uh, stand to gain uh, they stand to benefit from from riots, and so even if that's getting their agenda to the front uh, page of the paper, you know, front and center with the attention of the world or the local media or whatever it is, uh, they utilize people who would believe in in the same cause but never act like that. They use them as pawns. They get them fighting over things that that really they're not going to be able to to solve through the way they're fighting, and. Uh, all the while where there's division and destruction happening at a low level, whether it's fighting over race, fighting over religion, fighting over politics, you have people at a higher level who stand to gain more power and control through that. And oftentimes, they are, they are the ones who are instigating. We've seen that over this past year uh, through uh, so many of our political leaders on both sides of the aisle. Uh, using their speech in a way that doesn't bring peace and calm, but it instigates, it justifies, and it really um, continues to be like one more, one more straw on, on the camel's back, right? Until we get to the one who finally breaks the camel's back. It's more fuel, more fuel, more fuel, just to the right time. And then that they light the match and, and it seems like it's spontaneous, but it's been building for quite some time. And there's just the, that few, that group of, of a few people who really stand to benefit the most who instigate as well. So think about these things here. Rioting is a, it's a form of lawlessness. Uh, the Bible condemns it in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. So even if the rioters are seeking to advance a just cause, the ends don't justify the means, right? And so if you end up breaking the law, violating the law, destroying property, hurting other people, killing other people, burning police cars, uh, doing any of those things, your, your means um, there, the, your method of doing it, are not justified even if your cause is truly good. Oftentimes, your cause is limited in your knowledge and understanding of the whole picture, but nevertheless... Uh, the city clerk of Ephesus reminded the rioters in his city in, in Acts, or Acts 19. He said, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. There's, there's lawyers, there's attorneys, there, there's processes for this. If there, are any, if there is anything further you want to bring it up, it must be settled in legal assembly. And how true is that? Uh, we have legal processes and they're not perfect and they don't move fast and they should move faster in many cases. But if you feel like you are being unjustly treated, uh, you feel like there's laws that need to be changed, you feel like there are injustices, take it to the courts, and then understand that sometimes you can lose. (laughs) You might be right and lose, you might be wrong and lose. But violence is never something that God is calling us to, to, to engage in 
just to get our political or our cultural um, issue um, furthered. And so even when there's injustice, um, we're not called just to go around and start breaking things and, and indiscriminately injuring people or fighting against people. Uh, to be lawless is to consider oneself an exception to the law or to act as though there were no law. So you end up thinking that you're above the law, that the laws don't apply to you, and, and that becomes a law unto, unto yourself right there when you think you're above the law. Um, that's usually what happens in, in a right. You get even normally law-abiding citizens who they become inflamed with fury and self-righteousness, and, and they end up uh, deciding that their cause is worth doing that which is illegal, immoral, unethical, and they can end up destroying property, whether that's burning down buildings, looting the local you know, shoe store, breaking through the Capitol window, <laughs> uh, tearing apart the Senate floor. They can end up doing things along those lines where they, they end up uh, tying up you know, law enforcement personnel that could be doing something other places. They hinder transportation. They, they harm innocent bystanders and, and, and destroy people's livelihoods. This is what ends up happening in riots. Now, again, I want to make sure we're clear. A riot and a protest are different. When you are protesting, you might be chanting, you might be yelling, you might be cheering, you might, it might be like a rally, but the moment you or the group you are with, even if you're not participating in it, start doing damage to other people and others' property, you are now part of a riot. And so you're either going to dispel it, you're going to leave, you're going to speak against it, or you're going to somehow find a way to justify it. And we've seen a lot of that over this past year. And um, it, all it's done is hardened the hearts of those who, uh, you're, whose hearts you know, you're, you're trying to change and create a lot more resistance as well. People get caught up in that. And um, rioters end up placing themselves above the law. And they place their leaders above the law. And, uh, and ultimately, as Romans 13, 1 and 2 says, that's, that's sin. And so, again, you end up being motivated by this anger and this passion and uh, being used by others who would take advantage of it. And again, it's never a trustworthy guide, as James 1.20 would say. Uh, those who allow themselves to be controlled by anger may become foolish participants in ungodly riots. And so there's a little biblical perspective on riots themselves. Now, there is so much to talk about concerning what's going on in our nation. But I think that the, the challenge is going to be able to get, you know, getting to, the, getting to the root and getting to all the facts out on the table for everybody else. I, I don't know that you're going to do that. But what I know you can do is go to the scripture and say, okay, what's going on in my heart? What's going on in right here? God, search me and try me and see if there's any unclean way in me. Am I believing lies? Am I treating people unjustly? Am I taking stands for things that you're against? Am I taking stands against things that you are for or against people that you are for? And so for us as Christians, we need to have a relationship with the Lord that goes to the scripture and says, God, I'm reading this word to convict me and to transform me. By the way, that would mean that we actually go to the scriptures and read them. And so we, we need to be doing that on a regular basis, a daily basis. If we're spending more time in the media, on Facebook, watching the news, listening to it, than we are listening to what God has said, our faith is not going to be built up. Our love is not going to increase. Our compassion for others is not going to be enlarged. Uh, we're going to become angry. We're going to become bitter. We're going to become critical. Never as a Christian become that person who says, if you disagree with me, unfriend me right now. <laughs> You, uh, we are, if you vote for this person, uh, then you are not my friend. You're, not, you're dead to me. Never become that person. First of all, it's shallow. Second of all, it's very ungracious and unloving. And it's, it's exceptionally uh, prideful. <laughs> you know, you, it, it is exceptionally um, self-righteous to think that, that uh, because there's others that, that don't line up with your way of thinking or believing that they're dead to you. 
I want you to kind of compare yourself to Jesus and think how righteous you are compared to him. If you look at that, you'll realize, oh, there is none righteous. No, not one, especially not me. And even as the scripture says, there, there is none who do justice, none who do righteousness, none, including me. And on my very best day, I am so far away from God in my own efforts. The fact that he loves me, that he accepts me and he reaches out to me should tell me that I have no excuse to treat other people any less than that. You see, you're so much more alike with your enemy than you are to God. You're so much more alike uh, that person who, who you absolutely would despise, their morals, their values. You're so much closer to them in and of your, yourself than you are to Jesus. The only way that you get accepted by God is nothing you've done on your own. It's everything that he did to bridge the gap. When Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. If it was, I'd fight. But Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He extended love and grace, and he never agreed with them. He never said, you guys are right. I'm wrong. Not at all. But still, he understood the brokenness of humanity. And I think that's where we need to get as believers as well. We need to pray for our nation. But we also need to speak in, in love, in truth, in grace. We need to be uh, kind. <laughs> but we, it, we also need to disengage from the arguments, from the strife, from the division. We need to disengage from those who cause us to feel that way. Meaning this, I'm not going to listen to all the news and all the... All the um, the, the, those with the agenda that cause them, call themselves journalists that want to stir me up against somebody else. I'm not going to fuel that fire all the time. Uh, you can look at the facts, you can look at the details, and you can see there's two sides to the story. Neither are perfect, but there is a right, there is a wrong. We need to stand for what's right. We need to stand against what's evil. But there's more ways to do it than just yelling about it at your neighbor or on Facebook or something like that. Uh, there's more ways to deal with this than being worried or fearful or doom scrolling, you know, or just watching the news all the time. There's more ways to, to handle all of this than just that. And so as believers, we press into Jesus. We do what's good to those around us. We serve those within our context, within our sphere of influence. We love them and uh, we remain a hopeful people. Amen. Hey, well, I hope that helps you. Praying for you that you would live out your faith more than Sunday. I hope to see you here next week, either online or in person at 930 at our church in sunny Folsom, California. God bless.